morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to all of you who are joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, and also for joining us for this side, side event organized by Benin in conjunction with the United Nations High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. My name's Adam Cotter, Senior Vice President at DZ Bank. Uh, I'm joining you from our offices in Singapore. Uh, for those of you who aren't too familiar with DZ Bank, we, we serve as the central institution uh, for all the cooperative uh, and rural and church banks in Germany. Uh, and DZ Bank recognized at an early stage that the global fixed income market has huge potential for facilitating the transition to a sustainable future and has helped drive the development of a sustainable bond market since its infancy. Um, to start the event, I'd like to give a quick overview of our key speakers and panelists. So I'm very pleased to have joining us today, Hugues Bocoso, General Manager of the Benin Debt Management Office, Eve Delamote Caribou, head of the network's team for SDSN, Professor Alistair Alinsato, Chief of Staff of the Senior Minister in Charge of the Development and Coordination of Government Action of Benin, uh, Adi Jato Hassan Zanuvi, Chief of Staff for the Senior Minister in Charge of Economy and Finance, Yunuen Hernandez Suno, Deputy Director of ESG Control and Monitoring, from the Ministry of Finance and Public Credit, here joining us from Mexico, and Cedric Mill, head of, head of the Center of Expertise and Innovation uh, and ESG coverage for SSAs uh, from the Texas Green and Sustainable Hub. So thank you all for joining us. Um, by way of background, uh, one year ago, the Republic of Benin carried out its first international bond issuance dedicated to financing projects with a high impact on the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals for an amount of 500 million euros. With this issue, Benin has made history as the first country in Sub-Saharan Africa to carry out such an operation. <clears throat> on the 4th of May, this operation received the Deal of the Year Award, um, which represents the best financial operation of the year by the Financial Times Group's magazine, The Banker. In this momentum of strong commitment to achieve the SDGs, the country has established an innovative partnership with the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network, the SDSN, and the SDSN will play an important advisory role for providing observations and recommendations that will not only be taken into account in the design of public policies, policies sorry, and action by the government of Benin, but also share with various stakeholders, including international investors. Today, the first SDSN document on Benin has been produced and will be launched uh, during this side event uh, of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. It is a, a pilot baseline report on the analysis of policies, progress and trends of the country's SDG indicators. Now, without further ado, I'd like to head um, to hand over, I should say, to uh, a presentation on the SDSN report. And that will be delivered by um, um, Eve de la Morte Caribou. But before we do that, I would like to hand over to Hugues Locusu, uh, who will provide some remarks. Merci, Adam. Mesdames, Messieurs, c'est un plaisir pour moi donc de prendre la parole en ce moment au nom du ministre d'État euh, en charge de l'économie et des finances, M. Robert Wadani, à l'occasion du lancement du rapport annuel sur le développement durable. Je voudrais en ce moment donc remercier particulièrement le, le réseau SDSN pour l'invitation à participer à cet événement afin donc de partager l'expérience du Bénin en matière des progrès qui ont été réalisés pour l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable. Comme l'a dit donc Adam, il y a effectivement un an, précisément le 15 juillet 2021, le Bénin a émis le premier emprunt obligataire au rebond au DD du continent africain. Et cet emprunt de 500 millions d'euros 
qui est exclusivement destiné au financement des projets éligibles à l'agenda 2030 des Nations Unies. Mais faut-il peut-être donc le, le rappeler, c'est depuis 2016 tout au moins que qu'une nouvelle dynamique a été mise en place dans la gouvernance des finances publiques en général et dans la gestion de la dette également en particulier. Et dans ce cadre, le Bénin a fait de l'atteinte des objectifs de l'agenda 2030 Nations Unies une priorité en alliant dans une démarche volontaire sa matrice donc, de politique publique sur les ODD. Les progrès donc, réalisés sont compilés dans le rapport qui nous sera exposé dans les minutes à suivre. Cette opération a été le fruit d'une coopération avec certains partenaires tels que l'UNIMF, le Costing, et le réseau SDSN des Nations Unies, présidé par le professeur Jeffrey Sach, que je voudrais remercier, pour le suivi de la situation du pays par rapport aux objectifs, par rapport aux ODD. Mesdames, Messieurs, je voudrais, une fois encore, au nom donc, du ministre d'État en charge de l'économie des finances, vous remercier pour la tribune qui est faite aujourd'hui au Bénin pour partager son expérience. Je vous remercie et je souhaite à tous et chacun un, moment, un bon moment de partage. Thank you very much, Hugues. And now uh, on to the next part of the program. Uh, we'll have that presentation of the STSN report on Benin. And I'd like to hand over to Yves Teller Motte Karubi. Thank you, Adam. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever this may find you. I am currently joining you from New York. Um, where I'm here for the high-level political forum. Um, as Adam introduced me, my name is Eve de la karubi I'm head of the networks team and responsible for this cooperation project with Benin at the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. For those of you who aren't familiar with the SDSN, we are uh, a unique network established in 2012 under the auspices of the UN Secretary General but we are an independent organization mobilizing science and research around the world in support of the achievement of the sustainable development goals. I'd like to give a little bit of context around this report before we jump into the conclusions. Um, this is part of a family of reports that SDSN has developed and has been publishing um, since 2018. We have not only our global edition, um, the 2022 edition of which launched last month, um, but we also have regional editions for Europe, for Africa and Latin America, and some other uh, subnational editions, which um, this report for Benin would uh, fall under. This methodology has been refined over the years and audited by um, a European institution. Um, and uh, we use both, in this case, international data as well as uh, national data for the international uh, domestic level analysis. And you can explore this whole family of reports on our website, sdgindex.org. Um, I would also like to acknowledge my colleagues who have uh, supported the production of this report. Samori Touré, who has been the, the lead author and researcher. Um, my colleague Grayson Fuller, who helped support the data management, as well as Max Gruder, who designed the data visualization, which I'll be sharing shortly. Um, and of course, our colleagues at the Ministry of the Economy and Finance in Benin, with whom we have worked very closely over the past months um, to collect the data um, from the national statistical authorities um, and to collaborate our cooperation across um, different agencies and ministries um, to give us the most complete picture um, as possible for what is um, uh, what we're calling a pilot report, um, which is really here to present a baseline situation. Um, why are we calling this a baseline report in particular? There's two reasons. The first one is that this is the first report that we are preparing for Benin. Um, by nature of the timeline, um, by nature of the question of data availability, it is um, a little bit incomplete. 
Um, but the idea is to give a snapshot of where Benin stands um, today, um, where the trends seem to be going, to give some sense of where it stands in the region, um, and to have a look also within the countries and comparing the departments um, of Benin between themselves. So without further ado, I will share some of our key findings from this analysis. Um, the first one is that um, at the halfway point of the SDGs, Benin is halfway to achieving them with um, an index score of 50.7 out of 100. Um, this is more or less within the sort of regional average. Um, we're comparing Benin to ECOWAS and most countries in the ECOWAS region have um, around the same level of halfway achievement to the SDGs. However, Benin does perform better than the rest of the region with particular progress on SDG 2, which addresses both hunger and sustainable agriculture, on SDG 8, which is on decent work and economic growth, SDG 9 on industry innovation and infrastructure, and SDG 14, which addresses the protection of oceans and sustainable fishing. Um, and on those same SDGs, the region tends to be stagnating, whereas Benin is making moderate progress. Benin also performs relatively well on SDGs 12, which is on responsible consumption and production, as well as on SDG 13, climate action. Um, and as well as with the entire region, um, there are some uh, persistent challenges, unfortunately. Um, the trends for SDG 4 uh, on quality education, SDG 10 on inequalities, and SDG 11 on sustainable cities and communities um, must be monitored and reversed because they are unfortunately heading in the wrong direction. And this is true across the region. Our subnational analysis has revealed some disparities um, between uh, the regions, with uh, gender being the aspect of disparity that has the least inequality between regions. And then finally, um, we have a, a quite a large section of the report which we devote to um, analyzing the, um, the government action plan, uh, as well as the institutional setup um, and Benin has a uniquely strong institutional apparatus and political will. Um, and so even though the results that we're presenting now, in many cases, the data is not you know, from this past year um, and um, it's really there to serve as a baseline analysis, we predict that there will be um, significant results um, and progress in the years to come. Just to get a little bit um, into some more detail of those findings. So here we have um, um, a map presenting the index scores of the region. We have um, unsurprisingly a couple of uh, stronger performers, but as you can see, um, there's really the majority of the region is all in the same uh, color. Um, and here we again said the, the uh, SDG index score for Benin is 50.7. Um, you'll see that we, uh, two countries in the region, Guinea-Bissau and Cabo Verde, um, are not ranked in the index, and that is because of issues of data availability. Um, just quickly to illustrate some of those uh, trends that I mentioned earlier, um, really across the board, um, we have um, these straight orange arrows in terms of trends, um, really for the majority uh, of the goals. So unfortunately, the region as a whole um, is facing significant challenges. This is something that we all are aware of, but what is worrying is that the trends, and this is our prediction um, based on past performance projecting forward to 2030 of whether the country and region will actually achieve um, these goals. Um, and so we do see positive trends on um, goals 12 and 13, but really stagnation uh, and even decline on uh, SDG 11 on sustainable cities and SDG 16 on peace and security, which again is unsurprising um, given the, uh, the region. 
but of course the focus here is on Benin. Um, so here you have the overall score as well as this performance by SDG. Um, and I'll also show this, um, this same color coding. So we can see here, um, for example, these, um, these yellow arrows showing um, improvement on SDGs 2, 8, 9, and 14, which um, contrasted to the rest of the region where there was um, stagnation. And here even SDGs 12 and 13 are fully green with, um, maintain, with you know, being on track to achieve those goals. And so we um, really share a strong positive message here about these trends um, and encourage the government to continue on that. Um, and to also sustain the performance on those goals that are already in green while alerting to some of the um, challenges facing notably goals 4, 10, and 11. We also conducted a subnational analysis using national level data. So this is data that was provided to us by the National Statistical Office, and we constructed it into a leave no one behind index. Um, in this analysis, we take four different dimensions of inequalities uh, on the leave no one behind theme. The first one is inequalities in access to public services. Um, so this includes access to education and healthcare. Um, the second one on extreme poverty and material deprivation, um, which includes, of course, measures of extreme poverty, um, but also, um, for example, uh, metrics on slum dwelling, uh, on gender inequality, which I previously mentioned was the dimension across which there was actually the least inequality between the departments of Benin, and finally, income and wealth inequalities. I would invite you to um, explore this data and have a look for yourself on our interactive website. You can see the link on the top of your screen there in yellow. Here is just a static screenshot of what the interactive website looks like. So you can click on one of those four dimensions and see the scores laid out across the country. On the left-hand side, you can see all of the indicators that make up this index. And by clicking on the individual indicators, you can see um, the, the scores and performance uh, across each region. So that concludes the first part of the report. The second part of the report, we take um, our six transformations framework, um, which you see presented here. Um, the 17 SDGs that we all know very well um, are not necessarily an operational framework. And so in 2019, uh, SDSN published the six transformations framework, which are um, essentially these um, transformation pillars that uh, allow um, governments uh, to do policy planning and also coordinate um, in a way that makes sense to how the economy, uh, industry, and government itself is organized. But these six transformations correspond much better to sectors of the economy um, and you know existing ministries and portfolios. Um, and so using the six transformation framework, we analyzed Benin's um, uh, government action um, program, which is um, the most recent edition of which goes from 2021 to 2026. Um, and here you will see, um, based on our analysis of the seven strategic axes of the government's action plan, and on the right-hand side, the six uh, transformations of SDSN, um, how they actually sort of flow into each other and relate to each other. And also um, using some of the um, regional level data to sort of um, reality check this government action plan to see if it is sufficiently ambitious and complete to address all of these challenges. And the overarching conclusion is that yes, this government action program 
um, you know, which will be, uh, which is already in place and will be the, the guiding strategy for the next uh, number of years, really does fit very well into our framework um, and does very coherently uh, target and address the challenges to achieve the SDGs. We have also um, analyzed, as I, as I said at the beginning, the institutional framework. Um, and uh, this is from actually the Global um, Sustainable Development Report, as I mentioned, which was launched last month. In that report, we launched for the first time a sort of pilot um, index of countries based on their level of SDG commitment. Um, and you can see Benin circled here. Um, it's really worth noting that Benin is one of the only um, countries of its economic category in the high SDG commitment. Um, most of the other countries here are you know, G20 countries. And here you can see, again, Benin really being an outlier in terms of engagement, um, despite being um, a country that is still on a development pathway, it really has very strong um, engagement and efforts in terms of domesticating the SDGs, developing strategies, integrating it into policy planning and budgeting um, across all of these different uh, parameters of our analysis. I'm going to uh, wrap up here. I would invite you all to uh, read the report. Um, it is in French. Uh, we do have an executive summary available in English and we are working on also preparing a fully English version of the report. But if you visit benin.sdgindex.org, you can access all the different parts of the report. You can download the whole PDF, look at the individual chapters. So if you're particularly interested, for example, on this government efforts um, aspect, you can just download that chapter. You have the interactive map, which will allow you to explore um, the, the data for the infra-national Leave No One Behind Index, um, as well as download um, a lot of the different um, supporting uh, materials if you're interested to learn about our methodology or look into some of the specifics around the data that we've used for the report. Thank you all for your kind attention. Um, and I uh, give the floor back to you, Adam. Well, thank you very much, a fascinating presentation. And, yeah, and I encourage you all to find that uh, document if you can, uh, and even the executive summary of the English as well, uh, which I found very helpful. So uh, we're gonna continue the presentation well, sorry, the, the agenda as well. We're gonna go on to a bit of a, a panel discussion now on advancing the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, so we have those speakers I mentioned earlier joining us. Um, perhaps what I'd like to do is ask uh, uh, each speaker in order uh, to introduce themselves a bit further as well and also offer some uh, initial thoughts uh, on, on this topic. Uh, I'd be very pleased to start with Professor Alistair Alessanto, and uh, over to you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I'll, shift, I'll shift in print. Donc, je suis Alastair Alessanto, le directeur de cabinet du du ministre d'État, ministre du Développement et de la Coordination de l'Action Gouvernementale. Je voudrais À la suite du DGCA, à remercier euh, tous les organisateurs de cet événement, notamment le, le réseau SDSN, euh, pour tous les appuis apportés euh, au gouvernement du Bénin pour qu'on en soit là aujourd'hui. Je voudrais aussi euh, remercier tous les collègues membres du panel qui ont pu mettre de côté leur temps et, euh, pour participer à cet événement. Alors, sur l'expérience du, du Bénin, euh, c'est important de dire que, que nous avons eu un certain nombre de, disons, de, de, de coïncidences qui étaient à notre faveur juste à l'adoption des ODD en septembre 2015. Euh, le Bénin mettait en place un nouveau gouvernement euh, en avril 2016, euh, un gouvernement qui était arrivé avec beaucoup d'ambition, beaucoup d'engagement. Et un de leurs premiers, euh, disons, soucis 
en avril 2016, c'était de doter le pays d'un cadre de programmation de développement pertinent, cohérent et surtout aligné sur les, les ODD. Et à partir de ce moment, le ministère du Développement, en relation avec tous les autres ministères, avait pour tâche de travailler à la priorisation des sites des ODD. Comme vous savez, nous en avons 169 sur les 17 objectifs. Il était important dans le lot de déterminer les sites qui étaient prioritaires pour le Bénin. C'est ainsi que cet exercice qui a pris euh, environ six mois euh, et qui a mobilisé autour de la table euh, tous les acteurs pertinents, euh, aussi bien du secteur public, du secteur privé, de la société civile, euh, du monde des universités, des religieux, euh, des ONG euh, et sans oublier nos partenaires au développement qui étaient autour de la table pour environ six mois afin d'identifier les, les, les cibles ODD qui étaient des priorités pour le pays. C'est ainsi qu'après euh, l'exercice, à l'issue de l'exercice, euh, nous sommes arrivés à 49 cibles prioritaires. Et 49 cibles prioritaires, sans compter bien évidemment les cibles de moyens de mise en œuvre et les cibles de l'ODD 17 qui sont essentiellement des cibles de moyens de mise en œuvre. À l'issue donc de cet exercice de priorisation, nous avons procédé donc à l'alignement de l'ensemble du cadre de programmation de développement du pays euh, qui comprenait un certain nombre de documents, dont les documents majeurs étaient le plan national de développement, le programme d'action euh, du gouvernement euh, 2016-2021 et maintenant 2021-2026, et l'ensemble des documents de stratégie de développement des différents secteurs. Donc après cet exercice-là, la prochaine étape pour nous, fut celle de la domestication, euh, notamment des indicateurs. C'était important pour nous, disons pour le gouvernement, de savoir exactement apprécier les progrès que nous faisons au fur et à mesure que nous mettons en œuvre notre programme de développement et le programme d'action du gouvernement. C'est ainsi que nous avons fait aussi un exercice euh, au niveau de nos statistiques. Il faut dire que cet exercice reste encore aujourd'hui euh, un travail en cours euh, puisqu'il implique euh, des réformes profondes euh, au niveau de tout le système statistique national. Euh, à la fin, nous sommes arrivés à distinguer trois catégories d'indicateurs. Les indicateurs que nous avons aujourd'hui les moyens de calculer et euh, de diffuser les résultats, ça c'est la première catégorie qui est autour du tiers de l'ensemble des indicateurs que nous avons retenus. Une deuxième catégorie d'indicateurs, nous savons les calculer, nous avons les compétences pour le faire, mais nous avons besoin de ressources, disons, marginales pour activer, disons, ces capacités que nous avons. Et nous avons une dernière catégorie d'indicateurs sur lesquels nous n'avons pas véritablement des compétences et pour lesquelles des renforcements de capacités étaient nécessaires. Comme je l'ai dit, euh, tout ce travail reste encore aujourd'hui un travail en cours. Euh, il y a d'importants progrès qui ont été enregistrés. Nous avons eu il y a là, quelques semaines l'adoption de la loi sur la statistique. Et donc, c'est dire que cette réforme évolue euh, relativement très bien. Après l'étape de domestication des indicateurs, nous avons poussé, disons, l'analyse un peu plus loin afin d'identifier les sites prioritaires par localité. Vous savez, euh, nous, si nous prenons les cibles des ODD, nous avons au moins 60 de ces cibles-là qui ont des applications locales. Donc, c'était important de voir au Bénin, sur les 77 communes, quelles sont les priorités de développement retracées dans les ODD par commune. Donc, nous avons procédé à une forme de localisation ou, si vous voulez, de spatialisation des ODD afin de renforcer l'appropriation je me réjouis de ce que le Bénin, dans la présentation qui vient de nous être faite par elle, que le Bénin fasse partie des pays les plus engagés sur les ODD. Et ceci, effectivement, se démontre à travers un ensemble d'activités de, de, qui se mènent pratiquement quotidiennement sur, sur le terrain. Donc, après la spatialisation des ODD, qui nous a permis donc, de renforcer la population locale, des ODD, nous sommes passés à l'étape du costing. 
Alors, l'étape du casting, vous si vous voulez, il s'agissait pour nous de dire, mais ça va nous coûter combien d'atteindre des cibles? Puisque toutes les populations savent les cibles qui sont retenues. Les populations savent euh, les jalons que nous avons retenus, c'est-à-dire en, en 2022, on devrait être à combien? En 2025, on devrait être à combien? À, en 2030, on devrait atteindre des ODD. Alors, ça va nous coûter combien de les atteindre? C'est ça l'exercice du, du costing. Euh, pour lequel nous avons reçu des appuis en termes d'assistance technique, des appuis de nos partenaires, notamment du FMI et, euh, et du PMUD, euh, à travers le centre d'expertise qui se trouve à Addis Abeba, qui nous ont aidé à faire ce que nous appelons l'assurance qualité de ce costing-là. À la fin, euh, nous sommes arrivés à environ 74 milliards de dollars, comme ce qu'il nous faut en termes d'investissement euh, pour atteindre ces ODD-là. Et cet exercice nous a permis aussi d'identifier les gaps qu'il nous faudra mobiliser, de ressources qu'il nous faudra mobiliser afin de nous assurer effectivement que nous avons ce qu'il faut pour financer cette marche-là vers les ODD. Et euh, ça a été un exercice qui nous a permis en même temps de mettre en place un panier euh, de, de projets euh, immédiatement déployables et, euh, et de les apprêter, euh, de réaliser pour l'essentiel les études qu'il faut, afin justement qu'une fois le gap de financement comblé, que euh, de ce panier-là, nous puissions extraire des projets afin justement euh, de nous assurer de, de leur financement. Donc, globalement, cet exercice de préparation du Bénin, d'appropriation du, du Bénin, d'alignement du Bénin sur les ODD, euh, nous a permis de doter notre pays d'un national de, de documents, de politiques, de stratégies, de projets qui nous rendent à même avec maintenant l'implication d'un certain nombre d'acteurs de pouvoir justement aller à l'assaut d'un certain nombre de financements, de financements innovants, dont celui justement qui, qui nous concerne aujourd'hui. Voilà, Adam, très rapidement les étapes majeures du parcours du, du Bénin, de l'expérience du Bénin que euh, je voudrais partager en, en introduction à ce panel. Merci. Thank you very much, Professor Sato. So it's just one quick question following on from that. Um, what is the status of the process and of the path taken by Benin in the implementation of the, the SDGs? Le, 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 réseau, le réseau a un peu craché. Est-ce que vous pouvez reprendre la, la question? So, so yeah. Uh, what is the status uh, of the process, but also of the path taken by Benin in the implementation of the SDGs? Très bien. Alors, il faut dire que nous sommes relativement très avancés aujourd'hui, puisque euh, au-delà au de ces aspects que je viens de souligner, le Bénin a en place euh, un cadre institutionnel euh, qui, euh, qui remonte euh, jusqu'à jusqu la communauté euh, d'orientation euh, qui réunit l'ensemble des ministres euh, du gouvernement, euh, un cadre, euh, un niveau technique où se retrouve euh, une direction générale de, de la coordination du suivi des ODD, et dont l'objectif essentiel, c'est de s'assurer effectivement que l'ensemble de nos politiques, au jour le jour, sont alignées et que le dispositif de suivi, bien évidemment en appui euh, avec l'Institut national de la, de la démographie, euh, de la statistique de la démographie, que l'ensemble de ces structures-là, travaille de façon cohérente afin de donner les moyens au gouvernement de faire le suivi euh, pratiquement quotidiennement de, de l'évolution du pays euh, sur la marche euh, vers les ODD. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, nous avons en place euh, euh, le cadre institutionnel qu'il faut pour conduire, euh, disons, la marche du Bénin vers les ODD. Nous avons l'ensemble du cadre de programmation du développement qui est alignée sur les ODD et nous avons euh, le budget, donc euh, le budget général de l'État, euh, ainsi que l'ensemble des différents programmes budgétaires qui sont alignés sur les ODD. La tâche euh, la plus avancée et la plus importante aujourd'hui, 
c'est le suivi quotidien de la mise en œuvre de l'ensemble de ces dispositifs afin de nous assurer qu'effectivement nous ne déraillons pas et que nous suivons la trajectoire tracée à travers l'ensemble de, de ce cadre institutionnel et de ces documents de programmation. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, now, moving on, I'd like to bring in our, our next speaker, uh, that's uh, Adijatu Hassan Zanouvi. Uh, Mrs. Zanouvi is the Deputy Chief of Staff for the Senior Minister in Charge of the Economy and Finance. Uh, and over to you, Mrs. Zanouvi. Uh, good, good morning or good afternoon all, depending on where you are. Um, so I will switch in French. Uh, bonjour à tous, donc comme le disait Adam tout à l'heure, thank you for the introduction. Uh, je suis Adidiatou uh, Hassan Zanouvi, la directrice adjointe du cabinet du ministre de l'économie et des finances, ministre d'État, uh, en charge de la mobilisation, je suis en charge de la mobilisation des ressources et notamment uh, des financements internationaux et du financement, uh, du financement climat et du financement du développement. Voilà, donc euh, en termes de, de présentation, je, je remercie euh, les, les intervenants euh, préliminaires. Euh, merci euh, Eve pour, pour la présentation. Nous voyons au travers ce, ce rapport qui, qui est lancé aujourd'hui par le Bénin euh, pour ce qui concerne l'atteinte des objectifs de, de développement durable. In, uh, hello, Adam. Hello, sorry, yes, Sunubi, sorry, I couldn't hear you for a bit there. Apologies. So, uh, one question I do as prior to the inaugural issue, Benin launched an innovative partnership with the SDSN. And how has this helped you, and, and how did investors react to your inaugural issuance? Okay. Um, thank you for the question, Adam. Um, D'abord, c'est vrai que euh, il faut souligner que le réseau euh, des solutions pour le développement durable, donc SDSN, travaille sur le secrétariat général des Nations Unies depuis 2012. Ceci a été un élément essentiel euh, qui a motivé ce partenariat. Euh, L'approche de SDSN vise à accélérer l'apprentissage, partager, promouvoir, comme on l'a vu dans le, le rapport, des méthodes intégrées qui répondent aux défis économiques, sociaux et environnementaux auquel notre monde est confronté aujourd'hui. Ce partenariat innovant, pour le, qui est le premier de ce type conclu dans un pays d'Afrique avec SDSN, s'inscrit dans la continuité des engagements pris depuis 2016, comme je le disais, par le Bénin pour l'atteinte des ODD. Nos engagements en faveur des ODD ont valu au Bénin d'être retenus en 2018 pour participer à l'initiative conjointe du FMI et de l'ONU pour le financement des programmes de développement et l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable aux côtés de quatre autres pays à travers le monde. Enfin, donc, dans cette dynamique euh, dans laquelle euh, s'inscrit le Bénin, on met l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable au cœur de la politique économique du pays. À travers ce partenariat lié au suivi, à l'évaluation des progrès et des efforts réalisés par le gouvernement béninois, L'analyse, comme on l'a vu, des politiques publiques, SDSN joue un rôle consultatif important auprès des autorités béninoises. Toutes ces observations et recommandations ont vocation en fait à être prises en compte dans la conception des politiques publiques et de l'action du gouvernement, comme l'a présenté tout à l'heure euh, Monsieur, Monsieur Alisanto Alaster, et donc et y compris notamment dans nos programmes de financement. En outre, l'un des volets importants qui, de ce partenariat est la mise en place d'un réseau SDSN au Bénin pour une participation plus large des universitaires et chercheurs du Bénin. Vous comprenez donc que ce partenariat est très utile pour, est très utile pour le Bénin. Pour ce qui est de la deuxième question, de dire comment les investisseurs ont accueilli notre, notre émission inaugurale, je vais dire que les mesures prises préalablement euh, 
avec tous les ministères, car c'était un travail euh, conjoint et interministériel, en particulier en ce qui concerne l'analyse du budget par rapport aux cibles ODD sélectionnées. On l'a écouté tout à l'heure. Cela fait partie de tout un processus qui a commencé en, en 2016 et qui, euh, qui a continué dans notamment la, la, la structuration même de notre programme d'action du gouvernement. Ces actions nous ont placés dans une position vraiment confortable et crédible vis-à-vis -vis des investisseurs qui ont accueilli de manière très favorable cette, ino cette émission inaugurale au regard du niveau de souscription que nous avons eu, qui était trois fois au-dessus de, 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 de la demande initiale. Ce dispositif montrait bien que nous sommes en mesure de leur offrir une plus grande transparence sur l'utilisation des fonds qui seront levés. Il faut également souligner que cette opération préliminaire a été réalisée en collaboration avec eux afin que les critères d'éligibilité, donc avec les investisseurs, afin que les critères d'éligibilité et les autres exigences soient examinés ensemble. Tout ceci a été un atout pour nous lors du, du roadshow que nous avons organisé euh, au travers, enfin, afin de préparer les investisseurs à cette émission inaugurale, comme vous l'avez dit Adam en introduction, qui était une première en, en Afrique. Voilà ce que je peux dire par rapport à ces deux questions que vous avez, que vous avez soulignées. Uh, thank you very much. It's always a challenge managing the demands of investors, but uh, you've certainly done uh, a very good job uh, in this instance. I was wondering, finally, if you could also share some of Benin's experience with this issuance, basically in terms uh, of any um, great challenges you found with it or or lessons to be learnt, and, and could this perhaps be a model for other countries within sub-Saharan Africa? Okay. Um, parlons de l'expérience et de la pratique du Bénin, il faut, uh, à mon avis, retenir trois, quatre ou cinq aspects importants. Uh, D'abord, on l'a vu tout au long des, uh, des, uh, des exposés qui, qui ont été faits, il faut un engagement politique. Si on doit partager notre expérience, on commencera par cela. Il faut d'abord l'engagement politique. Dès 2016, comme on l'a dit, la nouvelle dynamique de gouvernance dont je parlais a été mise en place, plaçant l'atteinte de l'agenda 2030 des Nations unies au cœur de la politique économique du Bénin. Les défis pour nous étaient de trouver des solutions innovantes de financement de l'économie, notamment les marchés internationaux de capitaux. Nous avons donc fait l'option d'effectuer cette émission de rebond ODD, qui est un produit d'investissement à forte dimension d'impact, innovant en Afrique et qui intéresse les investisseurs. Ceci permet d'assurer le financement des projets à forte sensibilité ODD du programme d'action du gouvernement. Ensuite, il y a eu quelques dispositions préalables pour l'émission que j'aimerais partager. La première chose a été l'élaboration d'un document cadre de l'émission obligataire dont la contribution à la durabilité a été évaluée comme avancée par Moody's VE, obtenant ainsi le score le plus élevé possible et correspondant aux meilleures pratiques du marché. Par la suite, il y a eu la sélection provisoire des projets sectoriels éligibles sur la base des cibles prioritaires ODD. Et c'est pour ça que le point que je mentionnais plus tôt, de dire qu'il faut une coordination et une cohérence entre les différents ministères, car choisir les projets éligibles, est un, est un des aspects, je dirais, les plus, euh, plus challengeants dans ce processus-là. Et un, ensuite, la bonne gouvernance en prenant en compte toutes les exclusions thématiques et sectorielles. Pour les restes, c'est l'organisation du roadshow que nous avons fait pour présenter aux investisseurs avec, bien sûr, l'appui de nos banques conseils. Le troisième point que j'aimerais partager, en fait, euh, en, en, en expérience, qui est un point important, porte sur les engagements pris vis-à-vis -vis des investisseurs. La production annuelle de deux rapports, un rapport d'allocation audité par un cabinet euh, indépendant et un rapport d'impact qui, lui, a été soumis à l'examen par les structures nationales de production des indicateurs de référence ainsi euh, que les organes administratifs de contrôle interne. Et enfin, un point le dernier point, mais non 
non moins le plus important, la gouvernance mise en place pour le suivi des obligations ODD. Nous avons un comité de pilotage présidé par le ministre d'État, le ministre de l'Économie et des Finances, qui assure la validation de la conformité de l'éligibilité des projets, des actifs et des dépenses retenues, l'évaluation et la sélection des dépenses éligibles, ainsi que l'allocation analytique de tous les fonds levés. Il a été aussi créé une cellule rattachée au ministre de l'Économie et des Finances qui assure le secrétariat permanent technique du comité de pilotage ainsi que la préparation euh, des différents documents livrables attendus. Également, la mise en place d'un site internet odd.gouv.bj dédié aux obligations ODD pour faciliter l'accès des investisseurs aux données, informations, indicateurs, divers et visuels ré, ré, euh, relatifs aux projets et populations bénéficiaires impactées. On voit donc que la transparence euh, dans la communication d'informations, dans, dans le suivi, sont des éléments clés euh, quand, on émet, euh, avec, dans un, quand on émet une obligation avec un engagement fort dans l'utilisation des fonds. Pour finir, il y a bien évidemment le partenariat avec SDSN, créant un contenu unique pour alimenter les rapports d'impact et également l'extension du dit réseau au Bénin. Voilà dans les quatre points majeurs de notre expérience que je, je, je souhaite partager avec les autres pays qui, qui se lanceraient dans, dans, cette, dans cette aventure d'une émission ODD pour, pour financer leur, projet, leur programme de développement national. Great, thank you, Mrs. Zanubi. I think that's great. We can take away four pillars and and use that around the region to to uh, help other countries who are embarking on this journey as well. Now, talking about other countries, I think it's a time just to move away from Benin and also Africa uh, for a moment. I'd like to bring in our next speaker, Miss uh, Unuen Hernandez Sunu, uh, who is joining us from the Mexican Ministry of Finance and Public Debt. Hello, Yunen. Thank you for joining us. Hi, bonjour. Here in Mexico, I'm also here and there. I am Benin. Uh, on behalf of the Minister of Finance in Mexico, I want to thank to the Minister of Economy and Finance of Benin for the invitation to participate in this panel. We consider this to be a great opportunity to discuss our experience on developing these kind of instruments, uh, the SDG bonds. And, um, also to share our best practices on uh, our first reporting. Uh, but first, I would like to greet my co-panelists, uh, Professor Alistair Alinsato, Adijatou Hassan Sanovi, Cedric Merle also, and last but not least also to, to greet um, Adam Carter. Thank you for moderating this panel. And as we all know, uh, Mexico was the first ever issuer of the SDG sovereign bond, uh, with its inaugural issuance focused on socially impactful SDGs. I would like to start my participation by addressing why uh, the contribution to SDGs it is important to the government uh, of Mexico. This process was mainly born from the commitment that Mexico has acquired to encourage sustainable development and inclusive growth. The main priority is to reduce social and environmental gaps by promoting well-being in country, especially within the most vulnerable population, you know, like not leaving anyone behind at the same message uh, Benin just mentioned before. Um, this allows to return Mexico's commitment to the continuity of the 2030 agenda through the creation of this solid uh, governance for the planning and also monitoring of the SDGs. Furthermore, the bond complies with the public policy objectives of promoting sustainable financing. Besides, it has become a tool to develop the capital markets providing these uh, thematic instruments, no? talking about green, social, and or sustainable uh, bonds. And this to be like a solid foundation like our so uh, SDG sovereign bond framework. Uh, we also aim to offer investors a higher transparency in public spending and a better monitoring uh, for the fulfillment of these SDGs goals. Going forward, we recognize that the path of the Mexican economy will depend mainly on the consequences of the pandemic and the fact that the ongoing public health crisis will continue to weigh on economic activity, employment, inflation, and other macro variables. 
uh, and important indicators that here in the short and medium term. Hence, this type of instruments also represents a great opportunity for the federal government to bank on innovative and effective financial instruments. We have shown great efficiency and appeal, especially during periods of high uncertainty and volatile conditions. On the other hand, we want to confirm Mexico's leading role as Latin American and emerging market sovereign issuer and place the country at the forefront of the innovation of sustainable financing. And the Mexico's sub SDG sovereign bond framework leverages the work that the country has undergone for the last four years. Uh, when it started to link the federal budget to the SDGs. To, uh, since 2018, to be precise. The framework is designed to be aligned with the Green and Social Bond Guidelines of 2021 edition published by the International Capital Markets Association, and also designed to be in line with the spirit of the European Green Bond Standards. Moreover, it provides the flexibility to allow us to issue either social, green, or sustainable bonds. This is because our framework encompasses 11 out of 17 SDGs. The reason why it's only these 11 SDGs is because Mexico finds that these SDGs are the ones which uh, we can achieve more tangible results. The remaining six SDGs are being addressed in a more transversal way in our reports. The selection process of eligible expenditure, uh, as uh, Ms. Adija too said, it's a challenge when we want to uh, put it on our framework. And this is a process that we do it annually since our national budget is approved by our Congress each year. And from that, we have uh, six um, additional filters established on our framework. And only we have a seventh filter for those who are related to our social SDGs, which is our geospatial criteria. And from this, we have our pool of eligible expenditures linked to the SDGs that uh, contribute to at least one direct contribution, has at least one direct contribution to the SDGs. In contrast with Benin's framework, in which their eligible expenditures are classified according to the four pillars of Benin's National Development Plan, which is population, prosperity, planning, and partnerships, Mexico has a use of precise categories grouped according to the SDG targets in which the eligible expenditures are linked, are linked to the federal budget. As it is required for this type of issuances, Mexico designated video areas now Moody's uh, ESG solutions as an SPO provider. This is an SPO that is updated uh, annually according to our eligible expenditures. And this also ensures our alignment of the framework with the SDGs and the international practices that are established by ICMA. And this happens to be the same SPO provider also for uh, Benin's framework. In the spirit of transparency, the Mexican government assigned a memorandum of understanding with UNDP to provide an opinion of our framework on its alignment to the SDGs, also to act as an observer during the process of the selection of eligible expenditure and to provide technical assistance on the development of the impact report. Similar case with the Benin's SDG bond, having with Sustainable Development Solutions Network as a partnership to provide observations and recommendations on, on the reporting. Uh, with this framework, Mexican government was ready and able to, to initiate the process towards its first SDG bond issuance. And uh, the first SDG bond, as we may know, um, was issued for uh, 750 million euros in September of 2020. And from Mexico's experience, we have seen that other sovereign issuers are keen to go to the capital markets with these thematic bonds, such as the Benin Republic, with an SDG bond on July 2021, uh, with an issued amount of 500 million euros, similar to the SDG bonds Mexico has issued. Furthermore, the first SDG bond of Mexico allowed to allow us to expand its investors, our investors base by accessing the international funds committed to sustainable economic development. Roughly the 44% of the offering for, from the first SDG bond was allocated to 78 new ESG uh, focus accounts, allowing Mexico to continue expanding the country's investors base. 
And the read from this transaction during 2021, uh, we issued our second SDG bond for a amount of 1,215 million euros. And also we published our first allocation and impact report, which represented an unprecedented challenge for UMS, since there was a need to compile all the public and granular information we got uh, in order to present in, in this report. Um, we, we think that promote transparency to investors regarding the efforts made on sustainable policy in Mexico is important. And the following step uh, for our upcoming report is to provide consistency and continuity in the sustainable agenda, which our federal budget has shown since our 2021, 2020 uh, issuance. Uh, which is a good sign of continuity, no? Additionally, I would like to mention that Mexico continues to expand its sustainable yield curve to other currencies, uh, both in the inter external and local markets. And nowadays, Mexico has issued another uh, year, uh, sorry, um, in 2022, at the beginning of 2022, Mexico issued uh, the first local SDG bond for an uh, amount of 1 billion. Uh, in two tranches, two and six years. And so this, uh, uh, we are currently looking forward to keep strengthening the local, uh, local curve in order for the other issuers, you know, both private and public, uh, to have different references and better price discovery process also with these thematic bonds. Uh, I would like to end my participation with a message to all my colleagues. It is important to, to speed up sustainable financing to projects with positive and social um, impact, and also to provide the best transparency as possible in order to avoid green or social washing. And this is, must be encouraged by both private and public sector, and we got to work together to face climate change and social hazards in a timely manner. Um, thank you. Thank you, Yuna, and that was very, very comprehensive. And I don't think I have any questions because you answered them all in your presentation. Um, but I think it's a very good move. Uh, yes, but you supporting also the local currency markets uh, and developing the local bond market with uh, the local currency issuance. Uh, and that's a very positive move that I think other countries can follow when the time is right as well. Um, we are coming up to the end of the session, but we can't finish yet. We still have one more speaker to come. We have Cedric Merle. Cedric, uh, as I uh, introduced before, is the head of the Center for Expertise and Innovation and ESG Coverage for Sub-Saharan Africa at Natixis Green and Sustainable Hub. Um, we're very pleased to have Cedric join us um, because he is familiar with both the situations or the models in Benin and Mexico, uh, and uh, Natixis helped prepare uh, those frameworks and issuances. So, uh, Cedric, with, with time in mind, um, my question to you really will be more about the development of the green, social and sustainable bond market but, and the innovative financing solutions that are being developed or have been developed uh, for countries uh, to implement their policies. Perhaps uh, you could reference both Benin and Mexico in your answer. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, Adam, and, and thank you to all the, the panelists. Um, so, what is very interesting in, in the in the two cases, Benin and, and Mexico, is that they they bring um, they brought they bring and they, they they commit to bring in the future uh, um, additional features. Because when we're talking about market, market growth, uh, the, the, the buzzword is always standardization. And uh, I agree that uh, it's important, but in the meantime, we also need uh, some innovation and, and tailor-made approaches. Um, and, and with uh, trailblazers and like, like the, those two countries, they're, they, they, are, they are creating and they're, they're deepening and they're bringing new features. Um, that, that really helps uh, enhancing dialogue uh, with investors. And very often we, we hear from uh, portfolio managers that they complain uh, about uh, sovereign, seeing engagement is challenging. And uh, I do believe that the bond, as, as uh, Mexico and Benin did, uh, really help uh, uh, facilitating this dialogue. So what, um, and what, what, what does the, uh, the report from the SDSN bring is uh, 
is a, an informed analysis about uh, the distance to which the, the country, uh, the distance uh, towards the, the goal, and it really helps giving a sense of, of prioritizations. That's very key. Uh, countries have different situations. We all know they, they are committed to the same uh, uh, objectives, international objectives, but we need a bit of uh, uh, tailor meditations, uh, a bit of customized analysis to, to reflect the context. And the conflict is not always national, it's also subnational. And in these two examples, they, they, they are providing data at subnational uh, level that really uh, allow to identify the, the, the areas that are the most in need. Um, so that's probably, a, I would say, a smart use of the SDGs, not using them as a, as a, as a list of themes, but really as time-bound objectives and creating accountability. Where, where do I stand? What, what I am doing? How much I spent? What are the other uh, uh, institutional aspects to meet those targets uh, and in a, in, a, in a dynamic approach? And some finance must be most uh, encoded into territories and, and less static. So looking, of course, at past performances, current, current ones, but also uh, near and long-term objectives. And that, 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 I think, really helpful and it could really uh, uh, strengthen the market, prevent uh, SDG or, or, or greenwashing risks. Um, and what is also important, that's what we're seeing in the in the, the green bond sustainability bond market, that investors are increasingly looking at the schemes, the the, the institutional engineering, uh, the reforms that help achieving the goals. Not only how much is spent, the the use of proceeds, uh, the amount, but also the, the overall consistency of the country in terms of strategy. Uh, uh, inter interministerial coordination, and that is very, very helpful, and it gives a better uh, picture, um, uh, overview of uh, of the the country performance and the efforts that are that are being made. Um, and I think, based on the report, uh, based uh, it's not only about disclosure because new data, new informations, new analyses are being designed. It really helps um, uh, stakeholders to put things in perspective, to draw comparisons. Be, uh, within the countries, between countries, and also to, to help opining on the targets. Are they ambitious? Are they demanding? Are we on track to achieve them? Uh, what can be enhanced? And that, uh, that could help having a, a feedback loops between issuers, their uh, private investors, but also uh, donors and, and other stakeholders, also identifying the areas where there is a need for technical assistance. So we have a comprehensive loop looking at different funding channels, uh, concessional ones, more, more market ones, based on data, independent data, and, uh, and, and diagnosis of the of the situations, and uh, I think that's really uh, something that must be uh, that must be uh, 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 praised and encouraged to have such a, uh, such a scheme, such a governance, and uh, it's also a matter of, uh, of course of transparency, but also a new governance. So for system finance, especially for sovereign countries, uh, for for emerging countries, there is there is something around the the involvement of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, acknowledged stakeholders, and and again building these loops based on data, adjusting, identifying the areas where where needs are, uh, updating the costing analysis, and reporting of course reporting on a regular basis. Uh, I think that uh, these are very uh, very promising uh, items. Thank you, Cedric. I know there's a lot to digest there and we could keep on talking, but we have gone over time already. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I do recommend all of you to follow those links to, to see the report itself, but also the executive summaries if you are short on time. Uh, but um, um, with that, I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for this uh, program. Uh, both from the Ministry of Economy and Finance of the Republic of Benin, but also from the, the UN, uh, the STSN, uh, and also for our speakers from the Debt Management Agency, uh, the, the other um, Benin government authorities involved, uh, our, our Mexican colleague, UN, uh, from the Mexican Public Credit uh, and Finance Ministry, and of course, Cedric from the Texas. Um, um, but with that in mind, uh, thank you all for listening, taking the time to join us, uh, and I will bid you farewell. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Goodbye. Thank you. Merci. Au revoir.